Hey guys, welcome to part one of my create your own Rust plugins tutorial series. If you're watching this, I assume you probably want to do something along the lines of create your own servers, maybe with your own plugins or game modes, or you have an idea of something that you want to make. So the goal of this video is to teach you how to do that because I wasn't really able to find any good tutorials online. So in this first part, I'm going to show you how to set up your server as well as set up your plugin project. The plugins are written in C Sharp, so we're going to be using Visual Studio for all of our plugin writing. Bear in mind, if you're watching this, you may need some minor experience with coding. If you ever don't understand the things that are going on, maybe watch a, a quick video on the basics. Um, so first things first, we're going to want to install our server. And to do that, I'm going to use a package I put together, Easy Rust. And basically what this does is it uses uh, the conventional manual methods of installing the server. So as you can see here, there's a signed copy of Steam CMD in here from Valve. And there's a batch script, which essentially is everything you're going to need. Every time the server starts, it's going to update the game. Uh, it's going to update and install Oxide, which is the mod loader, as well as update any plugins you've installed onto your server. Uh, so you won't have to worry about updates. And down here, you got your server information. So here's your name, description, player count, etc., etc. You can set these to whatever you like. I'm just going to call it Bacon Test for this example. Hit save. I'm just going to hit run. Now it should go through the installation process. You shouldn't have to do anything um, until it's finished. So we're just going to let that do its thing. Alrighty, so I just stepped away for a minute here. Uh, as you can see here, our server files are now populated. Uh, we should have an Oxide folder here, as well as the plugins inside that, config, data, all that. Uh, so our server should be good to join now. And to do that, you're going to want to go to your terminal and say client.connect localhost because this is a local server, 28015. That's the default port. If you change this to something else, make it whatever port you set it to, and just hit enter. Everything should connect properly. Alrighty, Sloppy Bacon has joined with Steam ID. So as you can see here, I'm not connected to the server. Should be able to run around and stuff. However, we are not administrators yet, so we're going to do that now and add ourselves to the admin list on both Rust and Oxide. So to do that, I have these two commands here. You're going to want to type them into your server terminal. Okay, so you're going to want to copy this ID right here. Do that same thing, so owner ID, and then right click, that'll paste, hit enter, there you go, and now it says added owner, uh, unnamed, this is the Steam ID here, you're going to want to do the same thing, so with Oxide, so Oxide, user group, add, admin, there we go, so now we should be added to our admin groups. So we're going to go ahead and save and restart the server. We're going to save, quit, and when the server shuts down it should automatically start back up again after five seconds. Now that we've restarted the server, the privilege update should have taken effect. Now that you've connected through the terminal, you should be able to go to your play game history and see your test server should be up in your history now. 
Uh, if it's not, maybe just wait a few minutes or just go through the terminal again. It'll show up eventually. Alrighty. So now that we're back in the server, I'm just going to test and see if we can do things like Noclip, which we can. We should also have access to God Mode and things like that. Yep. Oh. Must have disabled it. Anyways. So now that we are admin of the server, we can go ahead and set up our project. So, um, at this point, if you haven't downloaded Visual Studio already, you're going to want to go ahead and do that. You can download it from the Microsoft website, just the Visual Studio community version. I'm using 2019. So once that's installed, you're just going to want to open it up. And just create a new, uh, just create a new project. Alright, so the project type is going to be a class library .NET framework. This is very important. So you're going to want to select that. You can also find it over here if you search. So .NET framework uh, class library right here. Let's choose that. And we're just going to call this test plugin. It's a test Rust plugin. And hit create. First things first, we're going to have to add some references because the environment doesn't know we're trying to create a plugin for Rust at the moment, so it's not going to have access to different lists of objects and things like that from the game. So, what we're going to do here is add some references. So, we're going to right click, add reference. We're going to go to browse. And then inside of our root directory, uh, so we're going to go desktop, Rust server, you're going to want to go to Rust dedicated data, and then managed. And what you're going to want to do is add a group of these at a time. It doesn't let you select the whole thing for one of whatever reason. Um, so you're going to want to just do this in chunks. So starting from the top, we'll go down to like the bottom of face punch here. Add those DLLs. Hit OK. Alright, we're going to add references again. Alright, so now that we have our references, um, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste uh, our entry point. So this is just a, a basic template. You can copy paste this. And that's just going to be our basic format of the class uh, so that Oxide knows how to read it. It's right here. I'm just going to copy the snippet right here. So this is basically just saying, this is part of the Oxide plugin's namespace. Um, this, this class here, this is the name of our plugin, which must also match the name of our CS file. So I'm going to call this test rust plugin. And then we're also going to save as test rust plugin dot cs. All right, and it's saying uh, could be some missing references here, so I'm just going to go back in here and go to add references again, and just maybe I missed one. Okay, so so when you're importing, you really need to do it in small chunks because something like that could happen where it just didn't load some of them because there was too many. So yeah, you're basically wanna you're gonna want to import all of those, but just do it in small chunks because sometimes things like that happen. But now that that's done, as you can see, we have our basic template for our plugin and also our entry point. Let's set some information here. So. Right here, we have our plugin info. This is going to show up in our server terminal anytime that our plugin loads, unloads, 
has an issue, whatever, this is the information that will be displayed. So we're just going to call this test rust plugin. All right, as you can see here, we have our test rust plugin.cs, which matches our test rust plugin class name. And what we're going to do here is just test it out, see if it, uh, see if it loads. So we're going to go here to our Rust server directory, go Oxide, Plugins. And we're just going to drag and drop that right here. As you can see, Test Rust Plugin was compiled successfully. Loaded Plugin, Test Rust Plugin. V0.1 by Sloppy Bacon. So that's this information here. And we're just going to go ahead and unload that. I actually don't recommend drag and dropping. If anything, you should copy it because I've had some cases where I accidentally delete my plugin. Don't want to do that. So we're just going to leave these open. Just minimize those. And we're now actually good to start programming. This is this is the project set up. Um, a server is running. You can start programming your plugin. So I'm going to leave that there. Alright guys, I just wanted to say thanks for watching if you made it this far. Uh, I really appreciate any feedback or suggestions if you guys have it. In the next video, part 2, we're going to be covering some basics of Rust plugins, uh, the function of timers, how they work, and some game objects and how you can use them. Alrighty guys, take it easy.